Hi, welcome back. It's Adrian the Mountain Man. Uh, today I'm out here at, this is Eno River State Park, which is in Durham. Um, about 15, 20 minutes from my house. And um, I'm out here today because uh, I'm starting to try to ramp up my training for my next 100, which is the Mid-State Massive, um, which is in Massachusetts. Starts in New Ipswich, New Hampshire, and it goes to, um, uh, now I can't remember the name of the town, starts with a D in Massachusetts, but I'll get that for you later. Um, but essentially, I need to get to work. <laughs> so I'm out here. Um, it's super humid, I don't know if you can tell. I'm, I'm only, uh, let's see, 30 minutes into the run, and I'm like drenched. And uh, I'm also only two and a quarter miles in. So, um, part of the reason I'm out here at Eno, um, people who've been watching the channel know that I was running a lot at Umstead, but that was because I was racing at Umstead. Um, and that was all pretty much a bridle trail. But Eno here is very technical. Uh, you can see all these roots uh, and the rocks. The roots, I think, are the most uh, technical aspect of this. Um, I will call it a course, but these trails. Um, <laughs> so when it's not very hilly, uh, you've got these nice flat sections next to the river, but they are very rooty. So a lot of times I don't like to come out here because it's just slow, no matter what. Um, there are some sections that are runnable, like there's a little bit of a section up here. Um, but when you come out here, typically you're not gonna be going that fast. So a 20, 22 miler, which I'm trying to do today, will take forever. So I'm gonna try to, I'd like to go, I think minimum two hours, but at least three is the goal. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so, I will check back in in a bit. Good morning. I just showed um, that was Fuse Sport that when I just went by the lake. I mean, I'm sorry, the river. And uh, normally in October, they have the Eno River Run. Uh, they have a, oh, I can't remember the short distance. I think a five miler and 11 miles. And the 11 mile crosses that. Um, most of the time, that's that's very um, doable, but we have had a couple of years where they've had to reroute the course. Uh, there's that water crossing. There's another one that we're gonna see in a little bit. The other one, typically, there's some big boulders that you can just walk across, or you could go through the water if you want to. That one, you always um, have to forward or wade through the water um most of the time it's um like three or four inches above ankle so about shin deep i guess sometimes it's been up to kind of mid thigh um but i think if it gets any higher than that then they reroute the course and they don't let you do that because as you can see it's pretty powerful uh, just for context last couple of days we've had some thunderstorms big thunderstorms 
In fact, yesterday we had a big thunderstorm and then it rained all day. Most of the time in this area, you get a big thunderstorm, it rains for maybe an hour or so and then goes away, but yesterday it just kept raining and raining. Um, that's part of the reason I came out here to Eno River rather than going to the Mountains of Sea Trail. Um, on the sea trail is a lot easier, so that was one reason I didn't go out there, but it's always, it's near the water, so a lot of it's always just underwater. And um, I've gone out there a couple of times, it's just been unrunnable, and so it just kind of wastes your time driving out there. But um, this place, I knew there'd be a couple of places where it'd be, there'd be water, but as, as you saw, that would normally be a crossing, but there was a way around it. They have a suspension bridge, which I showed at the beginning, uh, that you go over. It's maybe half a mile down the trail. So, all right, well, we'll get back to it. I'll check in later. All right, this is the other water crossing I was talking about. Um, as you can see, this, <laughs> the rocks are still there. You can still see them. You could still probably make it and maybe get your feet wet a little bit. Normally this is uh, lower and uh, it's no, no issue to walk across the rocks. So um, we'll go to shot and see what happens. <laughs> It's moving pretty quickly, so I think that's why down river they don't let you uh, cross them for high because it, 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 it looks still here, but down that way it's pretty, it's moving pretty quickly. So. Right, can we make a, uh, let's see. We did it. So now we just have to do it again on the way back. All right, check in later. All right, um, let's get to kind of the theme of today's video. I didn't really, a lot of times I don't plan these like themes, just like when I'm out here running. Then I 
start thinking about things i'm like oh you know that'd be good to talk about so um so since the 100 on the april 2nd and 3rd you know i took some time off and uh then i was kind of off and on a little bit but i've been struggling with like motivation to get back out there especially i hate running in the summer down here in north carolina um so uh i've been doing a few shorter things stuff on the treadmill but i hadn't been doing any long runs um that's kind of the reason there wasn't a video last week because i ran on the treadmill and uh i almost did one earlier in the week but it would have just been kind of a filler thing and i didn't really want to do that but so the theme today is um real versus imagined courses as as a motivation so uh when i'm in Amstead, i've been able to uh run out there so i knew what it was and i knew what i needed to do um with the mid-state massive i've never been on that trail and i kind of have an idea of what it looks like but i've never seen it so it's kind of like oh, i probably need to do more hills need to do more technical stuff but i wasn't that motivated to start getting out here um but uh there's the iron mountain trail run which is september or i think this year like labor day weekend and that's a month before the mid-state massive and last year so i did like i think they have three distances i can't remember the third distance but they definitely have a 30 miler and a 50 miler i think the the other distance is maybe 40 it's in between and so last year in august uh, mid-august i ran pikes peak marathon and then i, I try i've been trying to do one race a month it's not really working out this year because i'm able to find things but um last year i did a, you know, some traveling to find races this year um we've done some other traveling for margaret so kind of trying to not go into too much debt here but um but yeah, I did the Pikes Peak Marathon like two weeks before the Iron Mountain Trail Marathon uh, Trail Run, uh, and I had signed up for the 50 miler. Well, I was just still beat from doing the Pikes Peak Marathon, and I was barely ahead of cutoff at the 15 mile mark, and uh, I wasn't gonna make it. <laughs> So luckily they let me drop down mid-race from the 50 miler to the 30 miler. Um, but the point of all that is uh, that race is really hard and really technical and really, uh, in some sense, and like rocky, kind of like this. And so um, sign up starts on June 1st. It's super cheap race, it's like $30 for the first week and that goes up to 60. Um, and then if you want a t-shirt, it's an extra 20 bucks, but, um, but anyway, that, knowing that and having that experience of that race really, um, kind of kicked me into gear <laughs> as far as like, oh, well, if I'm going to do that race, I need to really get to work because I know what that race is like. So that's what I mean. Imagined like it's not an imaginary course but i have to imagine what mid-state massive uh looks like and try to just prepare kind of on guesswork um as opposed to the iron mountain trail race trail run where i've done it and i know what's coming so that's uh i was wondering if uh anybody else kind of had that where you know oh i'm really excited to do a new course um and start training for it but you're not maybe as motivated as when you go back to something you've done before and <laughs> kind of know what you're in for and uh what your weaknesses were at least from that standpoint so um that's kind of what i'm thinking about today when i'm out here
we're almost done. So just to stop and have a little bit of fun. Hopefully I don't hurry up this and fall in the water. But I saw this, uh, this tree kind of reaching out over the water. Uh, so I thought maybe I'd, let's see how slippery it is. I'm either gonna walk out there. Uh, it doesn't seem too slippery. But this would be a good picture. Oh, I lost my arm thing. I can't hold on to anything now. So. <laughs> well, I imagined that I was gonna sit over the side of it, but I guess I'm gonna sit on it like it's a horse. <laughs> But uh, I saw that was kind of cool to be out like over the water. Right now I'm at two hours and 14 minutes, uh, just about to hit 10 miles. So definitely a lot slower out here. I think it says, yeah, 1341 pace. When I was doing my 30 mile long runs at Umstead, I was getting 30 miles done in about six hours. So 15 miles every three hours. It looks like if I'm out here, maybe I'll get 13 at the most. Uh, so definitely slower out here. I might from now on like for the rest of the training cycle alternate I mean, there's a few other places I can go but I might alternate like a slower more technical place like this uh, And then every other week go back to Umstead um, To do stuff a, li a little bit quicker, but I'm also trying to do faster stuff during the week uh, So on that note uh, this week I did do one workout on I think it was Tuesday uh, I did eight by 400 with 400 meter rest and i did those at 658 pace i was going to try and do it at 630 pace but i started the first one and i could have done a few of them at that pace but then it would have just dropped off so i decided to just drop down to 658 pace and i don't want to say 658 because you know again i'm doing that on the treadmill so i'm pressing uh like 9.2 or something like nine yeah something like that it's an increment on the treadmill anyway that's why it wasn't just an even seven minutes so i'm going to try and do that at least once maybe twice a week to do some like faster stuff anyway just this just getting back into it now so i'm not gonna push today i think uh once i get back to the car which probably be another mile or so um about two and a half hours i guess maybe a little bit longer uh then just call it a day uh as you know i'm transitioning from coming back from the 100 also now i'm in the heat which i haven't trained in for a long time uh, trying to get back into I missed the video last week, uh, but that's the first one I've missed all year. So uh, Trying not to let that happen again. So all right. Thank you for checking out the video uh, if you liked it uh, Give me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe uh, leave comment. Uh, like I said, I did ask before if um, You felt more motivated to run a, a course that you'd already done before if that helped you to train or if the excitement of like doing something new if that was more uh, motivating for you uh, I am excited to do the Mid-State Massive, uh, but it, well, it, I guess it, without knowing the course, it hasn't like struck fear in me, so I don't know what I'm in for. So with the Iron uh, Mountain Trail Run, I do know what I'm in for, and I know it's really tough, so that kind of got me into gear this week. So, all right, again, thanks for checking it out, and I will talk to you next week.